the car industry. Old Faithful, still bending you over and telling you with a straight face how this is a real plus for you. Details next. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au and I get new cars cheap for buyers here in Australia. Website for that, obviously. Anyway, the car industry's grubby little lobby group in the nest of assholes known colloquially as... <coughs> um, ...continues its production of weapons-grade bullshit, unthrottled by COVID-19 or even vestigial respect for the facts. See, a proposal being considered by a Senate committee next week would see prices for new cars fixed, eliminating haggling and negotiating any discount. That capacity to negotiate with someone who negotiates day in, day out in their lives, being the dealer, is a fear factor for some consumers. This takes away the negotiation price. Tony Webber there, and if the Federal Chamber of Automotive Industries, the peak body representing car makers, were the Navy, then it seems to me that Tony Webber would be the rear admiral. He's almost speaking the Queen's English in that one too, so well done there. One of my all-time favourite industry dudes. I do find Mr Webber endlessly entertaining. He's a master, and you don't hear me say that about dudes in the industry very often. Hashtag respect. It's like watching Tiger Woods in action, you know, dodging that flying frying pan that fateful evening. Just like poetry in motion is what I'm saying. He's quoted there by Channel 9 telling you and me, allegedly, how the car industry's cunning plan to eliminate your capacity to negotiate a better deal on a new car is actually a dead set benefit to you. Yes. He does this routinely with a straight face too. This is not just a one-off and I don't know how. Real communication skill right there. The convoluted logic of this statement is, apparently, insofar as I can see, we will take away your terror of being ripped off by a professionally rabid negotiator by making sure that everyone henceforth pays top dollar and therefore everyone gets ripped off equally in this kooky proposal that we are conspiring with the government to get up. We will eliminate all of the discounts, problem solved, and... What next? Nuclear proliferation, cancer, or world peace? What would you like me to do next? <sighs> Currently, you can go to a dealer and negotiate a better price, right? Or you can get ripped off by paying the full freight. Or something in between. Under this proposal of friggin' course, full freight, rip-off, is the only foreseeable option, at least as I see it. So here's the thing, okay? Buying a new car is just like buying a fridge or a TV or a camera. Retailers, and we call them car dealers in this instance, but they're just retailers with a franchise agreement, they buy the cars from the car maker. Selling those cars to you becomes the dealer's problem at this point. And dealers can discount the prices as they see fit or not, because prices generally cannot be fixed under Australian law. That works kind of okay in most domains. And the only difference is, when you buy a TV or a camera, right, you see all of the different brands of TVs and cameras up on the wall in some friggin' shop, and you can compare them directly all in the same place. And this is really good. Like, Sony has this, and Panasonic has that, and Canon does it like that. Kind of thing. It's convenient. With cars, of course, dealers sell only one brand under the one roof, and therefore you must traipse all over town to view the direct competitors on your shortlist, which is generally a bit of an inconvenient bastard, logistically. If refrigerators and TVs and bicycles and tools and cameras and hardware and caravans and boats and holidays, and frankly, nearly everything else, can be sold by independent retailers without any need for price fixing, why is it such a friggin' good idea? suddenly to fix the price of cars. Riddle me that. 
What is it that's so special about cars? Why are cars so commercially unique, allegedly, and therefore demanding of some special regulatory consideration in this bilaterally grubby, under-the-table, up-touching ballet which seems routinely to play out between politicians and lobbyists? I'm not seeing it. This is really happening because car companies are at war with car dealers and they want to see them eliminated or at the very least grossly disempowered. Essentially, car makers want you to buy direct from them online, preferably with no negotiation. If dealers do remain in the landscape long term, they will merely be service agents and they'll get a commission when they sell you the car and the spare parts to keep that car from shitting itself or not, of course, in the case of Jeep or Land Rover or Jaguar, Volvo, Audi, Mercedes-Benz, Volkswagen, Nissan, etc. All of the fun brands. Mercedes-Benz is entertainingly in the process of shuffling its Schittsville dealers off to the ankle-grabbing room in exactly this way. And Honda has already done it. I don't feel any sympathy particularly for the dealers, but I do expect that if this trend continues, the end of the pineapple is going to get somewhat rougher for you and me, the actual buyers of these cars. However this plays, it will not be a better deal for you. Our belief is that we always let the market take care of these things, but if there are policy proposals that the industry wants to put to government, then we'll certainly look at it. Deputy Prime Minister, leader of the Nationals and full-time empty suit Michael McCormack there, reconfirming his long-term commitment on basically everything, which would be, essentially, to demonstrate strong leadership and support for the proud people of Shitsville, whom he tirelessly represents mainly by doing nothing again and again and again, over and over, still in the most self-aggrandizing way possible. I do love me a good bunch of politicians. Politicians, of course, keeping pimps, human traffickers and drug runners off the bottom of the societal barrel for decades now. I do not know why more of them don't get on board with my initiative, which would be simply and achievably to get up every morning and do something incrementally to make Australia less shit. Personal opinion. Have those entertaining chaps and, of course, the chapettes at the FCAI forgotten that flexible pricing is the key to the operation of a functioning free market? How hard is this? To Tony Webber, I would suggest, if I were advising him, and frankly, I'd need an appointment with Dr. Kevorkian and if I were to awaken one day with that as my main gig, but I would suggest it is supremely disingenuous to continue to sell patently anti-consumer proposals to the public via the media cloaked in the dubious friggin' language of this grubby industry initiative and that grubby industry initiative being a benefit to all of us. I mean, Jesus. These propositions are all spin and no substance. The only tangible beneficiary of this grubby initiative is the friggin' car industry, okay? Ripping every consumer off equally by fixing prices and removing the ability to negotiate a better price, that might pass the sniff test, but only within the turd mine we call Parliament House. These kinds of statements, personal opinion once again, presume that all consumers, in other words, all of us out here in the public, are functional idiots lacking the ability to think for ourselves and join a fairly straightforward sequence of dots. Like radio and TV spent decades doing exactly that, underestimating the audience over and over. And look at what has happened to them. Pro tip, okay? What are you doing right now? Like right now, you are watching me on YouTube delivering commentary which would never get a run on radio or TV. And not because the commentary doesn't deserve a run, okay? Because of the inherent deficiencies in those mediums because of the underestimation of the appetite for the audience for informed comment. It's disgraceful. The industry's fixed price agency modelling for 
automotive retail landscapes of the future is weapons grade anti-consumer bullshit, I'd suggest. The three-pronged suppository is moving to this agency model now simply because Schittsville legislation allows it. They're not doing it in other jurisdictions because stronger pro-consumer legislation simply forbids it. Before I let you go, some dipshit in the comments is going to say to me, you're just shitting yourself that your business will collapse if this gets up, or words to that effect. Well, allow me to retort preemptively. Au contraire, dipshit dude. If this gets up, I will merely shift and sell Enquiry direct to car makers in exchange for some consumer initiative, right? Some incentive. And I will earn a commission for each sale that comes off. Enter the code AEJC at the website for free fuel for a year plus a thousand bucks of free accessories on checkout kind of thing. Something like that. That's how that will roll, okay? The car industry will still be gagging for customers. And up at this end of the funnel where people are still deciding, they must really hate it. When I say to some punter out there, buy the BMW over that piece of shit Benz, mate. One-on-one -on -one to actual customers with cash in their pockets, okay? It's the most galling thing in the car maker universe when that happens. Every car maker gags for inquiry and is therefore prepared to pay handsomely for it. That's just a commercial reality. It's how the industry rolls. That is not going to change because competition between brands will remain intense. But if the industry wanted consumers to have real choice, as the grubby lobbyists often allege publicly and disingenuously, let's see car de uh, dealers, let's see car dealers and car dealers operate just like Bunnings or Bing Lee or JB Hi-Fi or businesses of that nature. Let's have new car dealerships selling Corollas alongside Mazda 3s and Hyundai i30s and Subaru Imprezas and Kia Cerratos. In the next aisle over, we could have medium SUVs and then one hop further to the right or something, seven-seaters and then utes and things like that. Let's categorise them and have all the brands and then you can just check them all out and choose for yourself. And out the front, of course, the fire sale shit boxes, the Wranglers, the Nissan Leaf, Range Rover, every Ford that's not a Ranger or an Everest, you know, cars like that which nobody in their right mind should consider and which only ridiculous discounts would put on the shopping list, right? This is how the rest of the retail landscape operates. Dealers could stock any brand they wanted and none of the shitbox brands that routinely betray consumers in the worst way and make them quite cranky. Hands up if you would like to see dealerships like that because I sure as shit would. 